Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, this has become my <laughs> my sentence, right? Hello everyone. Somebody is commenting. All right. So today we are going to continue from where we stopped in the last class. We'll finish that sample question paper, the physics part, and then if we have some time, we'll start with the second sample paper. Okay. So are you all ready? So type in the comments, I want to see who is there, who is watching these videos, who is live today. Mizbasa was very happy, he said like there are a lot of people right now. So just type in the chat so that I will know who is watching currently. Okay, if anyone is new, so this is only for the new students, okay. All of you are old, so I know you. Hi, EZ, Milan, good afternoon. All right, great. So, who is this? Mercury, nice. Anand, Ina, okay, something difficult to pronounce. All right, Jai Shri Ram. All right, Anand. Chalo, let's begin. So, the section C, I hope you guys remember section A was the objective questions and those were some of the questions were tricky hi fat fat gaming okay shitij hi shitij good evening said safe good evening all right time pass nice so section a was the objective questions the questions were easy but they are going to be tricky so it is not going to be very direct answer you have to think the section B, so those are like a short answer. So you can get the direct answer for those questions. Section C, so here we are going to solve. We solved I think couple of questions and we'll solve maybe one or two now. So here you need to apply little bit. This is like a little bit application. This is not going to be straightforward. Section D and E, those are going to be difficult at least for the physics. So let's begin, let's solve. There is a section C. So these, you see this paragraph, so there is like a case study, or there is like a competency based questions. So I hope till now you know what are the competency based or the case study questions, right? So let's read, there is a paragraph. So let's understand what she is saying. So Sunita had a, had to replace a electrical plug. You see this one is electrical plug. So there is a three pin plug, there are three pins, okay? And for ironing her clothes. So she is using some iron to uh, iron her clothes. Hi, Crazy Chan. Good evening. Jungle. Good evening. Opinder. All right. Hello. So now, so do you remember what are the three plugs or three wires in the domestic circuit? We have learned three different colors. Do you remember anyone? Type in the chat. I want to know which one like which color is for which wire type in the chat okay plug p okay, all right so now when she removed the old plug she saw that there were three wires colored red black and green red black and green so can you tell me which one red one is which wire so red is our live wire <coughs> Black one is neutral. Do you remember? There is a neutral wire. And the green one, there is a earth wire. How many of you remember? Electric shock. Okay, nice. So now, to which pin on the plug should she connect the green wire? So now, what is green wire? Green wire is nothing but earth wire. You know what is purpose of the earth wire to do the earthing or to ground neutral correct black for neutral correct so now usually the first one is going to be first one is going to be live second one would be for the neutral and the top the p1 this one is for the green this one will for the green which is the earth wire so for the first one to which pin she should connect the earth wire, it is P, to the point P, 
she should connect the earth wire then to which part of the clothes iron uh, clothes iron is a green wire connected so now what is the purpose of the green wire so for example there is our iron right it can be any device just now let's suppose there is an iron so this one is a metallic part this one is a metal right so what happens sometimes sometimes what happen the live wire may come in contact with the metallic part so if the live wire comes in contact with the metallic part the potential difference increases radhe radhe hi riya i am doing great riya why plug p little bit larger uh why plug p is larger i don't know maybe generally there is no difference all the three pl plugs are usually the same size i need to check not sure why it is larger here okay i need to check i'll check and let you know okay an hi said good evening okay so now if let's say the live wire is in contact the live wire comes in contact with the metal so what will happen there is at 220 volts so this metallic part will be at this metallic part will be at 220 volts so what we do is we connect the green wire we connect the green wire there is a green wire which is nothing but our earth wire right so what is the purpose of this to ground or remove the extra charges to the ground or to the earth to carry the extra charges so because earth is always at zero volt so when you connect the green wire to this metallic part the metallic part finally becomes at zero volt and it is no more at 220 volt understood is this new practice paper no there is a i am continuing from the last uh, session so there is a same from the last session and if we get time we'll start with the second uh, second sample paper okay so to which part of the uh, clothes iron green wire is connected to the to metallic part that is the answer you see these are like short answer type question even though there is a paragraph or case study or the competency based the questions are not difficult so don't worry even if you feel something is completely different you never heard about it the questions are going to be easy trust me okay now state the function of the green wire so just now i told you what is the function of the green wire to carry the extra charges to the ground and when you carry the extra charges what happens the potential of the green wire or uh, sorry potential of this metallic part will be same as potential of the earth which is zero volt so we remove the extra voltage which was generated and because of that we will, we will not have any electrical shock kya hi ignore kar rahe ho sorry main ignore kar raha hu kya tumhe acha tumne bola tha kuch टाइम पास सॉरी अरे बहुत सारे कमेंट्स है ना मैं पढ़ नहीं पाया सॉरी फॉर दैट कुछ क्वेश्चन है यू कैन आस्क के ऑल राइट सो नाउ दैट वाज वन क्वेश्चन दिस वाज वन क्वेश्चन इधर यू सॉल्व दिस या तो आप ये क्वेश्चन सॉल्व कर सकते हो या फिर उसमें और होगा या फिर और जो होगा वो सॉल्व करो दोनों सॉल्व करते मत बैठना इतना टाइम नहीं है और फालतू में एनर्जी क्यों वेस्ट करनी है दोनों में से एक ही सॉल्व करना है आपको है ना सो नाउ रीड द क्वेश्चन द डायरेक्ट कॉन्टैक्ट बिटवीन विच ऑफ द थ्री कलर्ड वायर्स रिजल्ट इन द शॉर्ट सर्किट तो पहले तो आप बताओ मुझे शॉर्ट सर्किट होता क्या है व्हाट इज शॉर्ट सर्किट तो शॉर्ट सर्किट वो होता है जब लाइव वायर एंड न्यूट्रल वायर डायरेक्ट कॉन्टैक्ट में आते हैं वेन द लाइव वायर एंड द न्यूट्रल वायर तो ये फॉर एग्जाम्पल ओके लाइव वायर कैसे होती है रेड कलर की है ना दीज अ 
रेड कलर वायर एंड न्यूट्रल वायर ब्लैक कलर की आई डोंट नो ब्लैक दिखेगा यहाँ पे चल कोई नहीं ब्लैक कलर अच्छा वाइट करता हूँ मैं उसको दिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल ब्लैक कलर है ना सो दे इज अ ब्लैक वायर विच इज अ न्यूट्रल एंड दिस वन इज अ रेड कलर रेड कलर विच इज अवर लाइव वायर है ना तो उसमें से दे इज अ कॉपर फिलामेंट ये कॉपर की दिस इज अचुअल वायर दिस रेड एंड द ब्लैक दिज आर जस्ट कोटिंग दिज आर जस्ट इंसुलेशन सो वेन दीज टू कम्स इन कॉन्टैक्ट सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज शॉर्ट सर्किट वेन दीज टू कम इन कॉन्टैक्ट दिस वन इज कॉल्ड एज आई शुड नॉट डू दैट दिस वन इज कॉल्ड एज शॉर्ट सर्किट राइट दिस शॉर्ट सर्किट सो द आंसर फॉर दिस इज विच two wires out of the three so it is red and black these two wires when they come in contact there is a short circuit hai na next one state what happens to the current in the circuit in case of short circuit so jab ye short circuit hota hai us time pe current kya hoga current increases abruptly correct so now आपको कैसे पता चलेगा कि करंट एब्रप्टली इंक्रीज हो रहा है क्यों हो रहा है बता सकते हो कौन बता सकता है यूजुअली आपने देखा है कोई भी सर्किट तो उसमें फॉर एग्जांपल ये आ, बैटरी है दे इज अ एसी करंट ओके सो दे इज अ एसी बैटरी एंड नाउ वी हैव द रेजिस्टेंस है ना ऐसा रेजिस्टेंस है तो इसमें से जो करंट होगा तो करंट एसी का जो भी वोल्टेज है तो करंट क्या होगा वोल्टेज डिवाइडेड बाय रेजिस्टेंस है ना बट जब ये दोनों वायर शॉर्ट हो जाएंगी तो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस तो दिस रेजिस्टेंस विल बी जीरो जीरो और वेरी 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 स्मॉल इफ द रेजिस्टेंस इज अप्रोक्सीमेटली जीरो और वेरी स्मॉल वट विल हैपन टू द करंट सो करंट will tend to infinity it won't go to infinity because the amount of energy is limited so it won't go to infinity but we can say current is very large understood if the current is very large that means what is exactly happening english please okay amazing yeah some people they want hindi some they want english all right i'll mix both so what is the meaning of current becoming very large that means current abruptly increase in the circuit there is very little space i thought i am going to fall down <laughs> all right clear everyone why r become zero so there is a metal wire right these are metal wires or the copper wire this is a copper wire <coughs> it is just two copper wires they are connected to each other they are in direct contact so do you know what is the resistance of a copper wire by the way do you know the resistivity of the copper wire so the resistivity is approximately 10 raised to minus 8 of this order you remember resistivity and if there is a resistivity if i multiply this by length divided by area which will be the resistance so multiply this by length length is let's say 1 meter and area is let's say 10 raised to minus 3 or something or minus 4 this order minus 4 would be better i guess minus 4 so the resistance will approximately how much 10 raised to minus 4 ohms so this will be the resistance this is very 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 low resistance this is not zero but we can say that it is approximately equal to zero okay <coughs> all right so now my favorite section d and section e so do you like section d and section e how many of you like Did you solve? Try to solve. 
questions from section D and section E like amazing amazing nice Lakshadweep Lunawat nice nice name okay so now let's go to the section D let's understand what is the question you see I'll tell you first show you first the complete question there is a paragraph and then there is question number A there is question number B C and D so this yeah so there are four sub questions so there is a paragraph based on the information there are four sub questions hi pink army hello good evening oh, you are Rakhi hi Rakhi good evening Rakhi you are in grade 9th right what are you doing for the grade 10 classes okay <laughs> just getting bored all right all right so now how to solve this grade uh, not grade uh, section D type questions so let's understand first read the paragraph so there are two wires P and Q these are straight wires so here at the center can you see this P and Q these are the two straight wires they are carrying equal current current is equal hi darshan good evening vardhan hello bye you are leaving only just came to say hi all right rakhi study well i want to see you next year i'll give you difficult questions okay anyways so now the current is in the perpendicular and it is coming outwards current is coming outwards so this is the direction of the current okay so now k is the midpoint so this k is a midpoint so for example if you draw a line connect a line between p and q so this k is the midpoint okay so now the image shows that magnetic field lines so the these images they show the magnetic field lines okay but the direction is not marked so their direction is not marked so how will you mark it let's mark it first so that is going to be first question draw the draw and mark the direction of magnetic field so current is coming out from both of these so how will you find the direction hi Sudhanshu good evening you remember right hand thumb rule right hand so you hold the conductor in your right hand so these fingers which are curling around they will tell you the direction of magnetic field now the current is coming out from both of these current is coming outwards so you see the fingers this is it clockwise or anti-clockwise so this direction is going to be anti-clockwise this is anti clockwise for the both of them okay anti clockwise nice yasmin correct right hand thumb rule awesome yes so the magnetic field lines are anti clockwise let's just mark so this arrow you can mark and here they are going downwards okay again this side going upwards this side the magnetic field is going downwards clear so the first sub question we have solved now let's go to the second sub question if the current in the wire is increased so now again in the first paragraph they have equal current current through both of them was equal so do you remember the what are you saying you didn't understand it's so simple right use the right hand thumb rule if you don't understand the right hand thumb rule go back to my magnetism videos I think the first one first uh, magnetic effect of electric current I have explained properly go back to those videos and uh, like solve your questions <coughs> okay so now if the current is increased so do you remember that the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current 
I'll write here magnetic field is directly proportional to the current. So when you increase the current, what will happen to the magnetic field? Hi Sudhanshu, good evening. Why anti-clockwise? Oh, that you didn't understand. Okay. So now again I am explaining. There is a conductor. Current is going in the upward direction. For example, so you hold this conductor in your right hand. So your thumb, your thumb will point to the direction of current, and the fingers which are curling around. Can you see? They will tell you the direction of magnetic field. But now you remember here the current is in direction perpendicular to the plane of the screen current is coming outwards current from this point p and q so for example this is the wire coming towards you or wire at q again coming towards you correct so now we have to rotate the hand rotate the right hand by 90 degree so now can you see my thumb is pointing towards you or thumb is outwards so where are these fingers the fingers are curling can you see the fingers are curling and when you look it from the camera point of view so from here it will look like something like this so this is nothing but anti clockwise understood now b is directly proportional to i by r no 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 so the magnetic field is simply directly proportional to the current so there is no resistance here do you see any resistance here there is no resistance na huh? it is just empty space so magnetic field can exist in the empty space why we never use so that you will understand in 12th so you will use the equations and from those equations you will you uh, learn uh, how what happened from the equations you will learn how like why only the right hand why not left hand okay so when you increase the current what happens magnetic field will increase so how will the strength of the magnetic field around p and q change so now we know there is a anti clockwise okay so this i am marking from the previous question <clears throat> so when the magnetic field strength increase what will happen to the density of the field lines you remember i told you ncert yes class 12 read that so you will have lot of equations so now when you increase the magnetic field so density of these field lines will increase okay so again you can mark the direction so this is how you should show the diagram so draw the magnetic field lines around p and q represent this change so you see now the density has increased this was the earlier density low number of field lines that means the magnetic field strength is lower here the density of the field lines increased that means the magnetic field is increased seventh class we are teaching 10th it's okay right i used to learn when i was in 8 I used to study the tenth class books, so it's okay. When I was in tenth, I started studying twelfth class books. So you can do that as well. It's not bad. It's good. Okay, now the uh, I think this is third, third sub question. So what is the question? B is a magnetic field at point K. So for example, there is a there is a magnetic field at point K due to current in the wire P. so because of this p again i'll mark the direction of the magnetic field lines for both of them these are anti clockwise correct anti clockwise so now at point k k is the middle point so what will be the direction of magnetic field this is the magnetic field b this magnetic field is because of the current in wire p only because of p so only because of this wire this is the direction of magnetic field okay now so what will be the magnetic field due to p and q at the midpoint <coughs> so 
So because of Q, you see, it is in this direction they are going down. So this is B due to P and there would be a magnetic field due to Q. So because the current is same, you read the paragraph, the current was equal. So because the current was equal, these magnetic fields strength are going to be equal. So these are like balancing each other. So they will cancel out. So give a reason for your answer. So the magnetic field at point P, sorry at point K, so magnetic field at K is equal to 0. Why? Because these two magnetic fields, they will cancel each other. Magnetic field produced due to wire P and magnetic field produced due to wire Q, they are going to cancel each other. So if they cancel each other, the total magnetic field at point K is going to be 0. Clear? Easy, right? I told you, magnetism chapter, you just have to visualize. There are no equations as such. In 12th, when you go to 12th, you will have a lot of equations and those are boring. But in 10th, the easier thing is, you just have to visualize, no equations. Just right hand, left hand. That you have to worry about. Okay, now let's go to the last sub, uh, sub question. Okay, easy right? Awesome. Yes, it's easy. Great. <coughs> So there is a last sub, uh, sub question. So now if B is the magnetic field at point K due to current in wire P, so there is a magnetic field B this due to wire P. Magnetic field. You remember the direction anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, here also anti-clockwise. Okay, so now read the next question. Current in wire Q is reversed. So the current in the wire has reversed. So what will happen to the what will happen to the magnetic field? Definition of C. Uh, what is definition of C? So now when you reverse the current, what will happen to the direction of magnetic field? Can you tell me? So here we are going to use the right hand. Current earlier was coming towards you. Now I have to reverse. So you see the my fingers, they are now moving in the clockwise direction. So I have to redraw this diagram. So I have to remove this. This will going to be this is going to be clockwise. Because direction of current has reversed. So direction of magnetic field will also reverse. This will become clockwise. This is still anti-clockwise. So now mark the direction. It is going clockwise. Going down this side and coming up. Okay. So towards the right of the wire, the field lines are going down. Towards left, they are coming up. Okay. Yes. So what will be the magnetic field at midpoint K? So at the midpoint, so there is a B due to point due to wire P. Because the current is same, so the magnitude is going to be same. So there would be another vector here. So this will be B due to Q both are going to be in the same direction. So what is the total magnetic field? So B total would be, there is a B magnetic field, this B right? So there is a B due to P plus B which is going to be 2 times B. So this is the total magnetic field. Okay. So their magnetic field strength are going to add up. What is the circuit? 
circuit has a it has different sections it has a battery it has a resistance it has switch so that is called as circuit understood this when you reverse the current magnetic field change to clockwise and because the current through these wires is same because the current is same this magnetic field due to p which is nothing but our b it is given as b and magnetic field due to q which is also nothing but p so we have to add these two b's so b plus b which is going to be two times b so the total magnetic field at the midpoint is two times b okay all right thank you you don't know current okay then you have to go back to the earlier videos watch what is current and then come back to the revision classes okay <coughs> all right so now the last section section e so this is going to be for the four mark question and i am again telling you so when you read this section e these are going to be concept which are new some part which is new and some part which you already know so they will there will be a paragraph so they will tell you the information the additional information you have to use that with the whatever you have learned till now combine those things and then solve the questions and again i am telling you don't get confused or don't worry about it the questions are going to be very easy the paragraph may be difficult to understand but the questions are very straight forward very easy so let's find out you see here so now the image below is the refracting telescope so we never heard about telescope right in grade 10th so telescope is not there in the syllabus so that's why we never studied but this is a ray diagram for the telescope so why do we use the telescope so telescope is used to look at the stars which are very far away okay so now these are the incident rays can you see all these incident rays they are parallel to each other if the incident rays are parallel what does it mean object is at infinity object is very far something like a moon or stars they are very far away so that is why we use a telescope okay so now this what type of lens it is convex so this is a convex lens convex lens is nothing but converging so these rays they converge at this point okay so these rays which are incident rays converge at a point right so what is this length here this length here is the focal length f1 let's suppose there is a uh, lens number 1 so focal length of the lens number 1 this is called as objective lens this is just a name don't worry about it now the image is formed at this point and there is another lens here this lens there is a name for it eyepiece this is just a name okay so now this is a point size image or for this lens this will act as if there is a object there is a point object here point object and because of this point object you see this rays they are parallel to each other so if the refracted rays are parallel what does it mean the object is nothing but at the principal focus of the eyepiece so this is going to be our f2 let's suppose there is a lens number 2 so there is a focal length of the lens number 2 so that is the reason the uh, emergent rays they are going to be parallel to each other all right so now there is a refracting telescope so let's read the next paragraph what it is saying when the light passes through prism you remember prism you remember prism so there is a prism and if the white light passes through the prism it splits into seven different colors right there is a red to violet this is also called as dispersion different colors split and dispersion takes place so there is a dispersion this one 
white light split into seven different colors okay so now the same thing happens with a lens so these lens the same thing can happen for example if i, I draw it here so if there is a lens if there is a white light so this white light may split into seven different colors something like this so there is a red to fall it just that the lens are very thin they are thin lens so if they are thin lens this dispersion is negligible if they are thin lens okay so we have learned only the thin lens for grade 10 so the dispersion is negligible okay so now what they are saying the prism you see the prism is very thick so that is why the dispersion is very strong okay so now the yeah, same thing happens with the lens but much lesser degree that means very small amount of light will split okay this is called as chromatic aberration so there is just a name don't worry about it just a name so this thing the when the white light passes through the lens and these colors they form that is called as chromatic aberration so what is chromatic chromatic chroma means color so the colors they separate all the colors they separate and when the light passes through this first lens all the colors they separate because of that the colors let's suppose if you put a screen here so what will happen one color will be focused another color will not be focused okay so one color will get focused another color will not be focused that is called as chromatic aberration all right yeah light to focus at different points so at this screen maybe only the red color will focus if you move the screen backward then maybe green will focus so different colors will focus at different locations okay <coughs> so now to overcome this problem so what was the problem problem was sorry chromatic aberration to overcome this chromatic aberration the reflecting telescope was invented you see this one is a reflecting telescope have you seen gems web telescope gem uh, i don't remember the spelling web telescope gems web telescope so this exact same principle is used in the gems web telescope and this one was a older one like a hubble telescope it has the objective lens and the eye piece even the hubble is very powerful and very good uh, telescope but still there is some limitation to it and this one is the newer one gems web much more clearer it has a two mirrors there is one primary mirror and there is a secondary mirror so what happens these are the incoming rays these are the incident rays can you see all of them these are incident rays they are parallel to each other so that means the object is at object at infinity okay so object is placed at infinity so that's why the incident rays are parallel to each other so now what will happen all these incident rays will be focused to the this is what type of lens uh, sorry what type of mirror it is it is a concave concave mirror so it will focus all these parallel rays to the principal focus okay yeah so let's suppose the secondary mirror this now what type of mirror it is it is a convex so the all the focused uh, rays they are reflected back and they get focused at this point so there is a final image okay so there is a final image the place where final image is formed you can place a screen here or some detector you want place a screen in the telescope right telescope is uh, in the like outside our earth so we want put a screen here but we will place a detector so that detector will capture this image so now can we use convex mirror 
yeah this one is convex this one is convex mirror the first one is concave because why do we use concave because we want to converge light converge all the incoming radiation that is the reason it is concave okay this convex it just to again because these incident rays we just want to focus them to one point it is just like a we can use here plane mirror as well but convex is better right you can focus the image at a larger point that is the reason convex mirror is used all right so now let's understand what the question <coughs> first question is why there is no chromatic aberration in the reflecting telescope so when we have the primary uh, sorry this one was refracting you read this word refracting telescope there was chromatic aberration and in the reflecting telescope there is no chromatic aberration so why there is no chromatic aberration can you tell me there is a reflection right this is the reflection there is a reflection no refraction so what is the meaning of no refraction it means no change in the medium no change in medium so as there is a no change in the medium so the light the white light will not split into seven different colors if the white light is not going to split there is no dispersion and that is the reason no chromatic aberration clear see the questions are easy questions are not difficult you just have to understand the question properly let's do the part b of this one of the critical factor affecting the telescope is the amount of light it can gather so how much light it can come or fall onto the telescope so the more light a uh, telescope can gather the better the image it produces so for example if it is a uh, this reflecting telescope if this primary mirror is very large have you seen the james webb telescope the primary mirror is very large it is the i don't know like more the more than the uh, shape of this uh, small room i don't know exact va uh, value but it is very large you can check online what is the diameter of it and in this telescope you can increase the size of this what is this objective lens if you increase the size of the objective lens what will happen more light can go through the telescope okay so now what can be done to the lens to increase the amount of light the telescope gathers so we are talking about lens so it is which telescope it is our refracting telescope this one so we have to increase the diameter of the objective lens if you increase the diameter of the objective lens what will happen more light will go through it if the more light go through it it can produce better image clear see the answer is just one word or one sentence increase increase diameter of objective lens that is the answer if you just increase the diameter of the objective lens you can produce better image by gathering more light understood okay so now <coughs> i think two more a part side yeah in the refracting telescope given in the passage what should be the distance between two lenses so the distance between two lenses and they have given the hint use the first ray diagram in the passage to answer it so now look at this refracting telescope and look at this ray diagrams so these are the incoming radiation incident rays parallel to each other 
a parallel to our principal axis. This dotted line is the principal axis. So when the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis, they get focused. So this is the principal focus. Principal focus. Correct? So what is this distance? It is F1, which is the focal length of the objective lens. So now this image here will act as a object for the second lens. And now these are the parallel rays. So what should be this distance? It is F2, which is the focal length of our eyepiece. So now we want the distance between these two lenses. The total distance, can you tell me? Yes, jungle, correct. Nice, awesome. Do you know Dakshana Foundation? No, I don't know. Okay, so now, where was it? Yeah, what is the distance? So there was this objective and there is this eyepiece, right? Eyepiece. So the total distance between them is, this D is nothing but, this is let's say F1 and this is F2. So the total distance D is F1 plus F2 or F of the focal length of the objective plus focal length of the eyepiece. That is our total distance. Okay. Now the uh, last part of this, the light that reaches the telescopes come from very far away celestial object. Do you know what are celestial? So there are two types. They are terrestrial. Terrestrial means those objects which are on earth and celestial means something which is beyond earth, which is outside. For example, sun, moon or all the other planets, stars, they are all celestial object. So there is a incident light coming from the very far away. So now draw the ray diagram to show what happens when the light from far away object falls onto the convex lens and a concave lens. So there is a straightforward question, right? You have learned that. Let's just draw it convex lens. There is a convex lens and we have here concave lens. <coughs> this is optical center F1 to F1. This is F2 to F2. This is here optical center. Again F1 to F1. This is F2 and 2F2. So now convex lens is also called as convex lens is also called as converging lens. Let's just draw first the incident rays. Let's suppose these are the incident rays which are coming from the object object at infinity. Right? These are the incident rays. This is called as converging lens. So what will happen? The image will form at F2, right? And the second one, it is called as diverging lens. So if the incident rays which are parallel to each other, so what will happen? When they pass through the lens, they will diverge, they will go away from each other. And how they will go? It will appear that they are diverging from this F1, right? Something like this. So this is a virtual image. There is a virtual image. And for this one, there is going to be real image. Okay. So this is a very straightforward like your textbook question. All right. So this was the first sample question paper. We still have some time. So let's just solve. Okay, we still have, okay, we still have more question. I thought this is over. All right. So let's solve this. This is an R for the D. So either you solve this one or you solve this R question. <coughs> Light that reaches the telescope come from, okay, draw the ray diagram. Convex, okay, now we have convex mirror and a concave mirror. Everything is same. 
just that here we had lenses convex lens and concave lens here we have convex mirror and a concave mirror okay hi vlogs shubhajit so first concave mirror and then we have convex mirror this is concave so this one is the silver side okay this one is convex so this one is the silver side okay so again you can draw the incident rays these are let's suppose incident rays parallel to the principal axis incident rays for the mirror we don't have c uh, we don't have f1 to f1 but we have here there is a principal focus f and this one is center of curvature right for this all of them are behind the mirror so there is a principal focus f and the center of curvature so now concave mirror is also called as converging so what will happen to this rays they will converge and they will form the real image real point size image and when you have a convex mirror they will diverge and they will appear to diverge from the focus something like this so here we form the image there is a virtual image okay this ray diagram you have to draw easy do you feel confident now you can get lot of marks this is very easy don't worry so let's start the second sample paper so we'll will not go like will not solve too many questions today we'll solve at least couple of questions let's say first two or three questions yes in concave mirror they actually meet that is correct sanjay when the rays actually meet that is a real image if they appear to meet that is a virtual image okay great so section a the easier one objective questions let's find out <coughs> okay read the copper wire is held between poles of a magnet you see this is a horseshoe magnet there is a copper wire this one here is wire okay and these are the directions so now current in the wire can be reversed the poles of the magnet also can be changed so the poles can also be reversed okay in how many ways the uh, how many ways of the four directions can the force act on the wire so we have to find the so there is a magnetic field and the current so the direction of the current can be either going let's suppose these are east west north and south so right now the magnetic field is from the north to south correct that is the direction of magnetic field and let's suppose the current is is a case number 1 let's suppose case 1 so there is a direction of current right current is going in this direction so how do we find the direction of force yes nice jungle gaurang yes correct so we use fbi 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 you remember left hand rule flaming's left hand rule so what is f f is the force p is the magnetic field and i is the current force magnetic field current so now magnetic field is from north to south so this is the first finger from north to south the current current is coming out of the page can you see the current is coming out of the page there is a 3d diagram so you have to imagine or you have to visualize a little bit current is coming out of the page so what is the thumb thumb is pointing in the north direction so for the case one force is in the north direction okay so now we'll do the case number 2 so in the case number 2 what we do is reverse the current so i'll write down here reverse current so when you reverse the current again same fbi 
so when you reverse the current but the magnetic field is still the same so you have to rotate the hand keeping the magnetic field constant so now something like this current is now going inside into the page so what is this f father mother child okay there is m yeah magnetic field c is current okay nice nice thanks so thumb is pointing downwards hi hardik good evening so when you reverse the current then what will happen to the direction of force force will be towards south direction okay so now case number 3 and case number 4 so we have to use the current direction as case number 1 same as this but reverse magnetic field so when the current was going like coming out of the page this was the direction of magnetic field from north to south we have to reverse the magnetic field but current should be same current is coming out how will you reverse the magnetic field you have to rotate correct you have to rotate the first finger keeping the second finger same something like this so now see the thumb thumb <coughs> thumb is pointing downwards so that is thumb is in the south direction yes that is the third case and the fourth case you use the second case so the current was going into the page and this was the magnetic field from north to south now reverse the magnetic field so current was going into the page and you have to reverse the magnetic field keeping the direction of current same so something like this now the magnetic field is you see magnetic field is going towards uh, there's a my right current is going into the page and the thumb is pointing upwards so this is force is in the north direction so how many total direction this is north this is north there is one direction only this is south and this is also south so again one direction only so these are two different directions so answer is option number b b is the correct option nice all of you getting correct answers great so let's solve two more questions objective ones only easy ones okay what happened okay so there is a plastic insulation surrounding wire having diameter d so there is a diameter of this wire length l this is the length as shown in the figure okay a decrease in the resistance of the wire would be produced by an increase in what so we have to increase something so let's suppose do you know resistance value resistance is rho rho is a resistivity multiplied by length divided by area but there is a cylindrical wire correct cylindrical wire so let's suppose if the uh, diameter is d radius of the wire would be d divided by 2 correct so what will be the area area of cross section which is pi r square so that will come out to be pi r is nothing but d by 2 whole square which will be pi d square divided by 4 okay so substitute this area value here area substitute it here so we will get rho l and instead of area we have to substitute pi d square by 4 so that will be multiplied by 4 divided by pi d square so the resistance i can rewrite it as 4 rho l divided by pi d square so there is a resistance value oh your friend called you here nice adarsh hi shobha shobha chetan all right <coughs> so these are the four options we have to increase them increase all of them and check in which case resistance is decreasing try to increase all of them first one length of the wire if you increase the length now you look at this equation only this equation so the resistance is directly proportional to the length yes so when you increase the length what will happen 
resistance will increase do we need this no so this is not correct we want decrease in the resistance A resistance should decrease so this is not correct how do the second option diameter of the wire so resistance is inversely proportional to diameter square so if you increase the diameter here what will happen resistance will decrease that is the meaning of inverse relationship so this one is correct option b is correct here amazing yes hi pocket pokes craft all right nice so temperature of the wire so usually what happens uh, it is not given in this equation but resistance is directly proportional to the temperature so when you increase the temperature what will happen resistance will increase okay so this is not correct do you know why resistance will increase with temperature when you increase the temperature the molecules of this conductor they will start to vibrate so when they start to vibrate they will have lot of collisions the electrons will have lot of collisions with other electrons or other atoms and that is the reason the resistance value will increase and the last one thickness of the plastic insulation so the thickness of the plastic insulation will not change the resistance of this wire so this one is not correct so only correct option is option number b <coughs> why you take diameter d is the diameter d is the diameter okay d square because you see area this is the area i have substituted this value here area is what is area pi d square by 4 correct i have substituted this value in this equation instead of area i have substituted pi d square by 4 so that is how i got this equation and from here resistance is inversely proportional to square of the diameter okay <coughs> hi adarsh av sir called your name all right nice yes jangal but area is square of the radius right so it would be square of the diameter okay the last question for today let's solve it quickly type your answers in the chat i want to check which of the following pattern correctly describe the magnetic field around a long straight wire so when you have the long straight wire carrying current so around it which one is correct the magnetic field is straight lines perpendicular to the wire are they going to be straight lines no you remember the right hand thumb rule when the current is going upward direction the fingers they curl around so the magnetic field are these are the magnetic field lines which are perpendicular to this plane or perpendicular to the wire and they are clockwise or anti clockwise straight lines parallel to the wire these are not straight lines so this is not correct and these are neither parallel they are perpendicular to the wire radial lines originating from the wire so do you know what is this if there is a wire radial means coming like in radius i mean in circles but they are originating at the wire that is not correct they are not originating at the wire they are concentric yes concentric that is correct this is not correct yes the last one concentric circles around the wire yes this one is correct these are concentric circles around the wire awesome so that's it for today any questions any answers anyone if you have type your questions i mean not answers i'll give you the answers type your questions in the chat and do like share subscribe comment i want likes do like in the video to the video do comment subscribe to the channel if you have not any questions anyone all right then that's it for today why not thickness of the wire 
and the thickness is nothing but area right area of the cross section that is the thickness scattering of light okay any other questions we'll study that in the next class okay we just came all right come again in the next class what is rheostat rheostat is something the resistance can change and scattering is when the light falls onto the small particles it scatters in all the different directions that is scattering light scatters that means moves away in all the directions rheostat is the resistance the value can change that is rheostat just joined okay no worries come again in the next class we'll have another live session all right that's it for today this is a telegram link join the link and you will get the pdf bye bye everyone take care enjoy